Hi, my name is Mark Joseph and I'm a South Florida family law attorney. Here are the top five questions I get asked about child support in the state of Florida. I've been in practice for over 12 years and I've been doing these YouTube videos for many years as well. And the most questions I get asked is about child support. So I figured that I'd do a video that talks about at least the top five questions I get asked on this subject matter. But before we get into this, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be updated when we post new videos. One of the top questions I get asked as it relates to child support in the state of Florida is how much will I be paying or receiving in child support? Now this is a complicated question because there are so many factors that go into the calculation of child support. What your net income is, what the net income of the other party is, if there's any particular daycare or aftercare expenses, health insurance, as well as the time sharing schedule all play a factor into what the child support number will be. In the Florida statute, there's actually a specific calculation that is discussed based on the net incomes of the parties, as well as what is called the gross up, which is the substantial time sharing. And then once you take those things into consideration, as well as the daycare and healthcare, you can actually chart it. However, every case is different, so there's not a one size fits all as it relates to child support and its calculation. A bonus note I want to make to this question is the fact that child support isn't just for women. A lot of people get this wrong. Child support is for the benefit of the child. And based on this calculation, there are situations where a woman may have to pay the man child support. The second of the top questions I get asked about child support is do expenses matter? More specifically, the expenses of the parents. For those who have not gone through a child support matter, you would likely have to fill out what is called a financial affidavit. This financial affidavit does discuss your income, but it also brings up your expenses as well as your assets and liabilities. Now, for purposes of child support, the expenses of the parents do not matter. However, the expenses of the child could matter, but not necessarily for child support, but it could be related to child-based expenses. And while these don't normally get put into the child support calculation, depending on the type of family law case you have, it could be an expense that you may have to divide or reimburse to the other parent. But overall, your house, your car payment, how much you pay for your cell phone, electricity. These aren't expenses that are considered for at least the base calculation of your child support or what you would receive in child support. The third question I regularly get asked about child support is, what if my situation changes? For those who are receiving child support, they'll wanna know what happens if they start making more money or less money, or maybe the particular expenses that were calculated change. The person who's paying child support tends to have the same question. The short answer is it will likely require a modification. In the state of Florida, either party can petition a court for a modification of the child support based on what is called a substantial material change in circumstances. For purposes of a child support modification, the child support number would need to change either 15% or $50 from that amount, whichever is greater, to activate a modification. If that happens, then the court gets to recalculate this income all over again, gets to calculate the expenses as it relates to daycare, aftercare, and healthcare all over again, as well as take into consideration, if there's another warrant for modification, any sort of substantial material changes in the time sharing. So in other words, it becomes a whole new case. The fourth top question I get asked about child support in the state of Florida is if I can waive child support or if I can give up child support. 
The short answer to this is no. Florida has a public policy that child support is not the right of the parents, but the right of the child. Therefore, the parents cannot waive child support. That doesn't mean that there is not mechanisms or situations you can't put in place to allow for child support to be essentially zeroed out, where for whatever reason that neither parent will pay the other child support. These things can happen in a variety of ways. Either it be directly through the child support calculation, taking into consideration all the expenses and substantial time sharing, and it can be done by agreement. But the important fact that you have to know about this is that the court has to approve it. The court has an affirmative obligation to make sure that any matters regarding a minor child or children is found to be in the best interest of the minor child or children. And this doesn't only apply to child support. This actually also applies to any parental responsibility and decision making as well as time sharing. However, for purposes of the child support, you cannot waive it, but you can deviate. The fifth top question I get asked about child support in the state of Florida is, how far back does it go? So a lot of people are aware that, you know, once a child support case is filed, you'll be set to be put on child support from that time going to the child is 18 and depending on when the child graduates high school, a little further than that. But what a lot of people aren't sure about is how far back from before the filing can child support go, which is called back support or arrears, depending on the situation. The short answer to that is up to 24 months from when both parties did not reside together as a family unit. However, there are special uniqueness to this law that a lot of people aren't too keen on or aware of. One is the fact that on one end that if the child wasn't born 24 months ago, it only goes back to when the child was born. But what people also don't understand is child support can count towards the expenses of being pregnant. Medical appointments, the actual birth, things like that is actually something that can be required to be repaid as part of back child support. Now I'll be honest, I've not had a case in which that has been very aggressively litigated. And the few times that it has come up, we've just settled out that issue. But it is something that people should know that not only can you go back 24 months, it can be 24 months plus pregnancy expenses. A bonus question that I kind of get a lot when it comes to child support matters in Florida is how time sharing, or what most people refer to as custody, calculates and falls into the child support breakdown. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. It's called gross up. And what gross up is, is when once a both parents exercise 73 overnights or over, which is approximately 20% of the year, it starts to affect the child support calculation. So just a quick example of that. If you have a mother and a father, and the mother has 200 days and the father has 165 days, the calculation of child support will be a lot different than if the mother had all the days, all 365 days and the father had zero. That calculation and breakdown starts after the 72nd day, going into the 73rd day. The theory of this is that a parent who has zero time with the child should not be paying the same amount as someone who has that substantial time, which is a 20% or more per year. This tends to be a very huge contention in family law cases. You usually have the one parent who wants to have as much time as possible so they can get as much time sharing as possible. And then you have the other parent who wants to get as much time as possible to minimize how much in child support they're going to pay. 
Now, I'm not gonna say every family member is like this, every mom or every dad is like this. However, these are things that are typically heavily litigated in some of my cases. So, there you have it. Those are the top five questions I get asked about child support in the state of Florida. If you enjoyed this video, again, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be updated on our new posts. And if you or someone you know is having a child support or any other family law matter, please contact our office, set a consultation, we'll see how we can help you out. My name is Mark Joseph, thank you for watching.